uh, Simon Nelson. And uh, Simon has a background in digital disruption as a pioneer in taking media brands and content online. He and his teams have won many awards for digital innovation and product development, including several Emmys, Webby and BAFTA awards, the Pre Italia, Pre Europa, and Rose Door. And um, I am, I'm real delighted that we have Simon here. Hello, everyone. It's, uh, uh, it's an honor to be here. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's see how this will work. What can possibly go wrong? <laughs> I am going to talk um, for <clears throat> about 25 minutes, hopefully. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, share a little bit about FutureLearn first, for those who don't know us. Um, some of the rationale behind uh, our strategy, uh, the market context, and then talk about how um, coronavirus has impacted that. Uh, what we think, therefore, uh, the impact of that could be on the sector and what the response could be. So um, to begin with, then, uh, FutureLearn is uh, a company uh, founded uh, nearly uh, eight years ago, um, which was the British response to MOOCs initially. But we've become a social and collaborative learning platform um, delivering courses from uh, the world's best universities and increasingly businesses at scale. And we were established uh, by the, uh, and funded by the British Open University, a uh, 50-year veteran of online and distance learning, at the end of 2012, the year of the MOOC, so-called. Our focus was to try and bring very high quality user experience to a platform that we built from scratch, because as we looked at the quality of online learning generally in higher education, we thought there was much that could be done to improve it. Uh, in particular, bringing simplicity to design and making things more accessible on multiple devices. Uh, we've worked hard on this over the years uh, and are very proud of our net promoter score, um, which is one of my team is fond to remind me is higher than Apple's. Um, and uh, just recently, uh, we introduced ratings and reviews for our courses. Um, it, we've had nearly 30,000 reviews in uh, a few weeks and um, I'm very proud that uh, nearly 95% of those reviews are in the four or five star. And our belief is that um, online learning does not have to be uh, difficult or a chore. Uh, it should be uh, as enjoyable an experience and as simple a media experience um, as other digital media uh, that we consume. We also doubled down on one area that we thought we could differentiate, social learning. Our view was that uh, much of that early MOOC movement and much of what we saw in online learning was about merely transmitting information, maybe with some level of interactivity in form of tests. But we thought what was most interesting about MOOCs was actually people learning together. And we wanted to build on social learning pedagogic uh, thinking to try and implement in the platform an environment where people learned as much from each other as they did from the educators and truly felt part of the community learning together. Over the years, we've attracted now uh, over a quarter of the world's top 200 universities and an increasing range of uh, business and industry partners from all over the world. And our philosophy is that the traditional uh, full online, full degree um, or qualification needs to be unbundled uh, into something that is more flexible and more accessible for millions of people around the world who can't put their lives on hold to attend a university uh, for one to three years. Uh, and uh, we began by uh, building out MOOCs and increasingly focusing on short courses for professionals. We then moved into delivering full online degrees with a number of partners unbundled into those short courses. And we've now this year launched micro credentials, 10 to 15 credits, uh, professionally relevant uh, credentials that also stack towards credit in a university 
uh, and can be your first pathway into a further study. Uh, and we've launched uh, over 20 of these uh, since uh, December, and it's a key area of focus for us, industry relevant, industry endorsed micro credentials uh, that stack towards uh, a degree and enable you to start your learning in more flexible bite-sized manners, but also potentially just to get the part of that full qualification that is most relevant to you in your professional life at that moment. Over that period, we've now attracted over 12 million people uh, who've signed up to multiple courses, over 30 million enrollments. And those learners come from all over the world uh, with a strong base in the UK, uh, where we are based and where we started but increasingly strong growth uh, all over the world, uh, in particular uh, across Australasia. And this is what attracted um, last year the SEEK group from Australia to invest £50 million into FutureLearn and brought them alongside the Open University as 50-50 shareholders. And SEEK are one of the best kept secrets outside of Australia but a very, very successful company um, that is the leading jobs marketplace uh, for Australia, but has expanded beyond there to uh, take majority positions in uh, the leading jobs boards in countries such as China, Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam. Um, and that provides it with an almost unparalleled level of uh, data and insights into what employers and job seekers are looking for. Uh, and this has led them to uh, move into the education space all around the world um, in order to provide some of those services. And we believe in our two shareholders now, we have an incredibly powerful uh, global um, strategic strength to bring alongside um, what we've built to date. And all of those, both of those shareholders share our uh, mission and purpose, which is to transform access to education. To some degree, the Open University was uh, a pioneer of this mission. And um, when we um, brought on that investment, and uh, in the last year, um, the pitch I've been making to the higher education sector uh, has been to identify and acknowledge and try and target the vast global shortage uh, of higher education, the vast mismatch between the supply of and demand for high quality education all around the world from people who simply couldn't dream of attending uh, the physical universities they would like to or could not afford through affordability or through life stage. But layered on top of that was uh, the rapidly growing skills gaps, not just in traditional sectors like nursing and teaching, but driven by the digitization and globalization of industries uh, in areas like digital skills uh, and new jobs that simply didn't exist uh, a number of years ago, but were now the most in demand uh, areas and opportunities for professionals all over the world. And yet, but where the markets were moving so quickly that education was not necessarily keeping up in order to provide those skills. We were also flagging the uh, impact of AI uh, on coming, um, predicted uh, by some uh, to be um, in the uh, hundreds of millions uh, in terms of job disruption and all combining uh, to create um, a massive need for flexible, high quality education. And creating an incredible opportunity uh, for those organizations and institutions able to respond flexibly to the need for these new skills, such as data analysis, new forms of sales and marketing. And also those organizations prepared to rethink who their audiences are who their target should be, not just in higher education, those we've traditionally thought of as students, 
but all of those people who now are having their jobs or their lives disrupted and need uh, high quality, flexible, accessible education and training throughout their careers and their lives. So all in all, we positioned this as just the greatest opportunity universities had ever had to deepen their impact on society uh, and grow their brands, their reach uh, on a global stage. And that opportunity could only be grabbed by transforming themselves into digital organizations. But there's no question I was frustrated by the pace at which many were going. This is a survey that was done at the end, I believe, of 2018, where uh, on the Times Higher Education <clears throat> annual survey of vice chancellors and presidents around the world, they asked uh, a series of questions about online transformation. <clears throat> to what extent do you agree that online degrees will be more popular than physical degrees by 2030? The thing to look at is a number of people who strongly disagree or disagree with that statement. Uh, nearly 60% uh, of people in Europe disagreeing uh, that online degrees would be more popular than physical degrees by 2030. So effectively saying you had to keep going to university and in my view turning it back on that vast unmet demand. To what extent do you agree that established and prestigious universities will be offering full degrees online by 2030? Uh, again, if you look uh, at uh, all, then uh, nearly a fifth of people disagreed that established universities would be offering full degrees online. So they would turn their backs on the online medium. Uh, and the geographic differences are extremely interesting and reflect some of what we uh, experienced at FutureLearn. And then uh, coronavirus hit. So no one predicted this and no one predicted its impact. Uh, but I borrowed a slide from um, a colleague at uh, the EdTechX conference recently, who uh, talked about how in EdTech, um, the uh, pre-COVID um, acceleration towards uh, online technology might have been positioned uh, very low, um, but what's happened in the last few months has accelerated adoption by multiple years. And we certainly at FutureLearn have felt we've had to deliver three, work, three years worth of strategy in the last three months, and I'm sure many people here are in the same maelstrom. So a little bit about our response. The first thing we wanted to do was to actually uh, support people around the world with high quality information and education about the virus itself. We have a high quality uh, range of uh, healthcare uh, organizations and institutions, universities with strong medical schools, um, and we went to one of those partners, the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, with whom we'd worked during the Ebola crisis uh, five years previously. And we asked them, uh, faster than we'd ever done it, to turn around a course on COVID-19. That was an extremely high quality course from world leading academics and attracted uh, huge numbers of people. 70,000 at launch, over 200,000 uh, by now. And we also work with our other partners to try and target uh, more specific um, skills and requirements at healthcare professionals, um, such as working with St. George's University um, to um, provide uh, training to healthcare professionals, with the University of Edinburgh and the Royal College of Physicians of Edinburgh, uh, to try to support people who are coming back into healthcare as part of the coronavirus response. And the response from our learners was overwhelming, uh, overwhelmingly positive, uh, and the response from the professions as well uh, was uh, powerful, moving, and uh, 
assures us uh, of the powerful impact that global scalable platforms like ourselves can provide at moments of uh, global crisis like these. But we also uh, identified, uh, of course, a uh, huge need among the teaching community, teachers at schools, teachers in universities, educators of all, sort, all sorts, who suddenly had to move online. And we were able to marshal quite a wide range of teaching courses we already had in this area, in areas like blended learning uh, and uh, teaching English. Uh, but what we didn't have was a course uh, just on how to teach online. And so we built one. FutureLearn had never built the course itself before, um, but we knew that if we went to a partner, it would take uh, weeks and we felt we had days. Uh, we also have um, a world leading um, team of learning designers within FutureLearn who've been working on supporting and training our university partners in how to go online for the last seven or eight years. And so we thought, okay, let's use our own expertise and ask the team to build this. And they built it in a few days. Uh, but we also pulled together uh, a world-class range of uh, supporters and mentors from across our partners, uh, including Diana Lorillard from uh, UCL's Institute of Education uh, and partners in the British Council, um, Dublin City University, the Open University itself. Uh, the course was not uh, full of video or anything. It was designed to be interactive, to provoke conversation, to get educators talking to each other in our social forums and supporting each other while providing them with uh, interesting articles, thought provoking questions uh, and practical steps they could take now. And that course attracted 50,000 people on its first run. And what we were excited about was um, when we saw the comments in, that we put into a word cloud um, of how people felt. At the end of week one, you can see the excitement, but you can see how challenged people are feeling, how challenging it is, uh, how overwhelmed, anxious. End of week two, we felt we'd improved confidence, motivation, uh, excitement, uh, and, uh, uh, and supported a whole range of teachers through what was an excellent course and is available to sign up to now. We also um, have developed a micro-credential uh, with the Open University uh, so that people who want to take that uh, initial online learning onto more professional uh, accreditation uh, and uh, the potential to then uh, study for um, further uh, degree um, can do so. And this launched a few days ago uh, and uh, is likely to exceed the capped number we've put on it within a few days. We also launched our FutureLearn Campus offer to allow uh, universities to reuse materials for their own students, uh, such as the University of Leeds, which is opening up many of its courses on FutureLearn to its students. FutureLearn Schools, to help school teachers provide access to high quality online learning. And courses on upskilling, uh, in key areas like digital skills and business and management. Uh, and we were chosen by the UK's Department for Education to um, showcase uh, upskilling, reskilling courses to unemployed uh, workers across the UK. Uh, and we've also launched a range of industry led micro credentials, again, to support people whose jobs has been turned upside down and need to progress their online uh, to new online skills. Uh, and of course, we supported people through their lockdown period with board and busting courses. We've seen huge growth, five times growth in users and in revenues through this. But where is this going now? You've all seen the headlines, you'll all be experiencing the incredible turbulence in the sector. 
Uh, you'll all have seen various predictions. Uh, this is uh, just for US, US higher education of what could happen under various scenarios and the uncertainty remains. And we know that economic uh, downturn is already upon us uh, and huge disruption to uh, industries uh, and to job sectors is uh, going to follow. And again, this is you know, incredibly turbulent, uh, disruptive, uh, distressing, uh, demoralizing for people all across the sector. But we do think there are opportunities as we thought there were before. And where we would advise uh, educate institutions to focus is in the following areas. There's an urgent need for high quality online learning materials and what we did or what universities did to migrate rapidly to online teaching using their internal learning management systems was incredible. But we uh, advise that this can't just be a one off. This can't just be resilience um, and then moving on. Uh, there's a need and an opportunity now to invest in a bank of high quality content that can be delivered at scale uh, on high quality accessible platforms to students all over the world. Of course, you know, everyone is worrying about what the student experience will be like in a more fully online or blended environment and with the disruption of pandemics constantly on the horizon. Our our advice, online learning does not have to be a solitary experience. Online learning does not mean that you can't be part of a community. You can't share with other learners. You can't build communities together online. Training and support of academic staff is a huge mountain for all of these institutions to climb as their organizations need to migrate more and more to online. Again, use this as a catalyst for the digital transformation of your organization. A digital transformation that, you know, probably has been required for many years, but now can be accelerated by the catalyst uh, of what you've done over the last few months. In terms of the international student market, rather than just waiting for when those people can travel again to campuses, let's rethink what the international student market is, what international student mobility is required, how much can be taught in market, how much can be developed at a distance, and where the physical attendance is really required. And in terms of the major financial challenges that every institution will be facing, there are opportunities in this heavily disrupted world to transform the way one thinks about who one's audience is, where one's revenue comes from, uh, what markets one is in, and to think about those skills gaps, that reskilling, that upskilling agenda, that learners themselves businesses and governments are going to be prioritizing for many years to come. And finally, there's a danger of everyone going after the opportunity on their own uh, and spending all the resources that they have on the same things. If the web enables anything, it's collaboration. And we would like to encourage that as the lasting legacy of coronavirus in the sector. Opportunities for universities to share the load, work together to attack the short-term problems, but also target those bigger opportunities. Thank you very much.